Rabbi Kutlarski from Chabad in Arlington Heights. Rabbi, thank you so much for joining us. Have you read all those books that are behind you, or is that mm -hmm. just a screw fake uh, background? It's an honor and a pleasure. They're cardboard uh, fronts. I didn't actually take <laughs> the actual books. <laughs> well, you fooled me, for sure. Okay, well, let's get started and give us a little background. How long have you been in Arlington Heights? What prompted you to come to Arlington Heights? And how has life uh, surprised you in Arlington Heights? All right, great questions over there. So we're here, my wife and I moved here about five and a half years ago with our one daughter at the time. Um, we moved here at the request and uh, the inspiration of Rabbi Katz, Rabbi Shmuel Katz, in Chabad of Buffalo Grove. He had been doing some activities here in Arlington Heights. Um, and he realized that there's greater potential, that he wouldn't be able to fully service the Jewish people here. And he approached us. He asked us if we would like to come and move out. We were very skeptical because we didn't hear, I don't know what you hear about Arlington Heights, but the word on the street is there are no Jews in Arlington Heights. And I'm like, well, you know, I've heard that story so many times before. Um, it's a typical Chabad story. People say, oh, there are no Jews there, and there are plenty of Jews there. So we did a little bit of research. I flew down here, tried to meet some people, and we did speak to some people, and ultimately it was a, it was a, it was a leap of faith when we did move here. You know, we had some ideas. We really didn't know a lot of people, and uh, Baruch Hashem, the uh, two things we thought we would never have and would never be part of our Chabad house, was a weekly minion and the Hebrew school. Those were the two things we thought would be very difficult in this community, and those are the cornerstones of our shluchas. We have Baruch Hashem, a weekly minion, and we have a growing Hebrew school here in Arlington Heights. So those are some of the surprises that have come along the way. So take us back to those early days. You show up, basically you don't really know anybody, and there's nobody there looking for you. When you first started, where do you even begin? This is seven years ago, you said? About five uh, and a half years five, ago. Five and a half years ago. Okay, so it's before COVID. You show up, hi, I'm here. And what what was that beginning like? Right, so great question. Before we moved, there were a few people who we were told are friends of Chabad. And Rabbi Katz had given us you know, some contacts. Other shluchim shared contacts. And they said, oh, you know, here's five or 10 people, or here's this, my someone in my Chabad house said they have a cousin or you know, not, not really great connections, but just information. Three of the people that we had spoken to, and we were told are very good friends of Chabad, they had each individually told us that we shouldn't move to town because there are no Jews here. And they want us to succeed, and therefore we shouldn't move here. Um, and when we came, we were expecting that those few families and others that we had reached out to you know, we'll be running to our events. We put out, we put up a manure lighting three weeks after we moved, and other people did come, but not those original families who we, we had reached out to. And it actually took a long time for to become closer to those families. And Mark Hashem, each of them, we've had a story with each of them. They've become very close in, in all of their own ways. And now we can joke and say, Oh, remember you told me or your wife told me not to move out. Aren't you happy we didn't listen? And uh, some of them are embarrassed and some of them, you know, <laughs> get, get a kick out of it. <laughs> to help us to understand for people, you know, you're not a graduate of the Wharton School of Entrepreneurial Startups. A guy, you grow up, give us maybe a little bit of your personal background, your wife's background. You grow up, you know, you go to yeshiva, you're in school. How do you learn how to do these things? Is there training? Is there some sort of course you get? Do you get certified in shlichas training? I mean, they just drop you in the middle of Arlington Heights and say, you know, hit you on the side of the helmet, go out there. And, you know, we're, we give you lots of uh, encouragement and moral support and sheer enthusiasm. And how do you translate that once the novelty of being in a new place sort of wears off and you've unpacked? Where did you learn how to do that? Right. So we don't, while we don't have official training in marketing, which is something which is a, integral to the job of a Chabad rabbi, and you know sales and mar sales and marketing, um, but something which we do have is a wonderful yeshiva education, where we're instilled with a drive, um, a love to Torah, a love to mitzvos, um, a de a dedication to fulfilling the rabbi's mandate to reach out to every single Jew with love, to bring them closer to the Torah, and to encourage them to do even one more mitzvah, and ultimately it's that drive and that passion, and it's that will. When there's a will, there's a way. 
And that drive and passion creates um, all, and opens up all the doors that have to be opened and creates, you know, and it's far better than any tra- any um, official training that one can uh, go through. School of Hard Knocks. So you mentioned that you never thought you'd have a minion. You never thought you'd have a Hebrew school. Now those are thriving. Anything in the reverse, anything that you were sure was going to happen and then it didn't happen? Any uh, any events that you were so sure everybody would gobble it up and then mm-hmm. it didn't work? So that's a great question. Um, there there was. Um, we, we did try to start uh, various events. One of them is the Jewish Learning Institute which I'm sure everybody here has heard of, they may be familiar with, maybe attended a course somewhere. And I've grown up always saying, oh, JLI, you know, these are great, great courses. And, you know, we've tried time and again, and it just didn't hit off, you know, didn't connect with the people. Maybe it was too expensive. Maybe it's too formal. Uh, Maybe the people want something more social. Um, But for some reason, that just didn't really hit off in our our community. Um, There were other things which were very challenging to get started. Um, the Jewish Women's Circle. There were times my wife would make an event, and she would put in her heart and soul and hours and invest money in, in making a beautiful event and reach out to all the women that she knows, and only two people came. And you know, and but but that did take time. And Baruch Hashem, this year she's had events with twenty women that have attended. Wow. So, you know that that was something which did eventually take off, but was it was a challenging uh, road. And what's it like for your children to be out there in Arlington Heights? Do they have any friends out there? Is it they're 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 not in the local school? So what's it like for them growing up in that environment? Is it lonely? Do they enjoy it? How old are they? Give us a little sense of what their life experience is. So I'm really happy you asked that question because I was thinking about the Zoom today. I was thinking something that people may appreciate to know. You know, there are so many stories of you know, hashkacha pratis, you know, you knocked on this door, you've bumped into that person, you're in the right place at the right time, and all these great stories that shluchim have. But the reality is, I I believe that the biggest challenge, you know, our oldest is now six, we're still a young family. um, And this is something which is going to become a greater challenge as time goes by, is that ultimately, we do have a younger, we do have an element to our community, which is younger. We have the Hebrew school and different children's events, but ultimately, they're not going to really be friends with our children because the way they dress, the music that they listen to, the activities that they do, they're not going swimming together. They're not going to ballet classes together. Um, And there's always going to be that separation. And while, of course, we want them to be friends and we want them to um, feel part of our family, not always are the people in your community ready to do that because they know that there's a certain certain things are allowed, certain things aren't allowed. And that's a good thing. You know, certain people know I can't go to the rabbi's house on Shabbos, uh, you know, dressed in a certain way or, or whatnot. But because of that, there is, I don't I don't want to use the word loneliness. We're definitely not lonely. I mean, our children are not deprived. We're very lucky that we have the Chabad community and, and the Cheder and Skokie and right near Beis Menachem, where my wife and I collectively spend four hours a day driving each of us drive a one round trip um you have to spend quality time with our children um so we're very lucky to have that we're very lucky to have kosher food available um if we even want we can have we can you know our restaurants and we have all the all the amenities something which many other chabad rabbis don't have they live too far out and the children have to go to online school but in our, the community itself, you know, as the summer's coming, as you know, the Hebrew schools uh, toned down, Sundays are a little bit quieter now. We can't just have a play date with somebody down the block. It takes a lot more effort um, to come, you know, you know, to make sure that our children have a social, uh, a social life and real friends. Wow. So, what are some of the um, sort of big plans that a community like Arlington Heights is able to accommodate? I mean, Somebody lives in a in a very densely Jewish area. We think about large programs, but what are some of maybe the 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 activities that are geared for a community like in Arlington Heights? So, are you, are you talking? Are you asking about future grand? Yeah, like plans? what are your big plans? What what are the five year, the ten year, uh, the ten year <laughs> vision? Right. Um, so can of you course, be on the Zoom in ten years? <laughs> <laughs> that's some great stories. Um, so an area where 
everything takes time. It takes time to break into a community. It takes time to gain the trust of the people in your community. And uh, one of the cornerstones of our shluchas and the goals of our shluchas has always been to be involved in the hospital. Northwest Community Hospital is a 400 plus bed hospital here in Arlington Heights. It serves the surrounding suburbs. And before we, even before we moved out, I remember calling the chaplain's office and doing an, I, I said that I'm calling from Chabad headquarters, doing an interview to see how the Jewish patients are being served. And they basically said, yeah, we serve them. We take care of them. You know, we're good. And, you know, we don't need any services. I'm like, all right, that didn't work. You know, so we, we moved to town. I called them. I said, oh, I'm a new rabbi in town. I'd love to help out and volunteer. Oh, we're so busy. We don't have any time. Like, all right. How am I going to get into the hospital? So I just decided to show up and I went to the chaplain's office and they were so nice. They were so welcoming. And they were, you know, I think it's a Midwest thing that people don't know. You know, I'm from New York. You know, you knock on somebody's door. <laughs> if they don't like you, they're going to tell it to you. Um, and they were very nice and they didn't have a lot of time. They were uh, busy. But over time, we developed a, a relationship. And now when there's a when they have a Jewish need, so we are the phone number that they that they pick up and they call us. Um, I've been trying very hard over the last five years to always volunteer. Oh, I'll, I'm happy to visit the Jewish patients. I'm happy to come and help. Like, oh, Rabbi, we don't want to bother you. <laughs> um, and after all this time of building that relationship, that trust, so God willing, this isn't a five-year thing, right? But God willing, next year, starting in September, I'm going to be an official volunteer chaplain at Beautiful. the hospital and I'll Look have access you know, to be able to service the Jewish people. And we've had, you know, even with the limited access we have now, we've had a tremendous impact on people, um, you know, people in their time of need, we were able to help them. And uh, that's something which I believe has great potential really to be there for people that, you know, they're in their hardest time, they need spiritual guidance, they need to know um, what should I do in certain situations, or they just need help, they need encouragement, a listening ear. So that's something which I believe is going to be a, a breakthrough moment for the growth of our Chabad Center. Just wonderful. Just, just to so, add one more, please. Uh, going back to your earlier question and a program which we started and didn't take off is earlier this year, I tried to start um, with various doctors, you know, together with the hospital, they're obviously Jewish doctors and neighboring medical offices. We tried to start a monthly I, I offer them to do a monthly lunch and learn. You know, they came back and said, you know, let's do something on Zoom once a month. I'm like, all right, Zoom, we'll do something on Zoom. It happened one time, the next time, you know, the scheduling didn't work, and the next time this, next time that, and it didn't take off, you know, so. All right, but keep persevering. Look, we've been doing the Zoom now for over four years, and sometimes, you know, it's harder for people and more people and so on. So give us a sense, as you mentioned, you know, Wellington Heights doesn't have a lot of Jews, and the perception was, quote, unquote, there's no Jews, but you, of course, you meet the Jews, and they say there's no Jews. So what is the character of the Jewish community that lives there? They they've moved to Arlington Heights. Does that make them more interested in their Jewish life? Does that make them mean that they're running away from their Jewish life? What is your assessment of the sort of culture of the Jews who live in Arlington Heights? Right. You know, today, what I say today may not be what I'll say in a few years from now. But well, the way I have see you back today, in a few years. <laughs> the, way I, the way I see it today, there are, is an older element of our community which have been living here for many years. They moved here when Buffalo Grove was up and coming. It was a very Jewish neighborhood. They moved perhaps to the north side of Arlington Heights. There was a Jewish builder, which opened, which built a development. Bob Miller uh, built a development called Northgate. A lot of Jewish people moved in there, as it was right there, just south of Buffalo Grove. And there are still original homeowners that live here that are very traditional. And perhaps they're longtime members of other congregations, but they're very uh, proud of their Yiddish guy and they're affiliated or connected in, in one way or another. On the other end of things, on the younger part of the community, most, I don't want to say all, but most of the younger community, unfortunately, are intermarried. Um, they, had, they didn't move to Arlington Heights because it's a Jewish place to move to. Aside from Chabad, there are no other Jewish organizations, all right? We'll give Shalom Memorial Cemetery some credit. <laughs> Those people um, are not coming to your programs. <laughs> yes. You know. uh, wow, interesting. And what is over there, yeah. 
now that you've been there, you're sort of a little bit established. You're not just some new experimental. Have you seen a shift in the welcoming and sort of acceptance of Chabad or are people still skeptical? So, you know, many times when a shliach moves to town and there's an established Jewish community, there's a conservative or reform temple or some sort of federation, there can be a little bit of friction because who's this guy coming to town? We're here. We're the Jewish establishment in town. But here in Arlington Heights, there is no Jewish establishment aside from Chabad. So there hasn't been that element of like, why are you moving to town? Um, we're, we're already here and we're, t- when we're good to go. There have been people that are not interested, but there hasn't been that, oh, we're not welcoming Chabad. There hasn't been anyone to have that authority to say, oh, we're welcoming you or we're not welcoming you. And that's right. one of the advantages, although it may not be a highly populated Jewish area, but it is one of the advantages that we are the only show in town. So it's you, you've come into fresh territory. So it's got the challenges of there not being a lot of support, but it's got the opportunity that you don't have anybody there, as you said, who can say, hey, we were here. This is our place. What are you doing? So I guess you'll know that you've really reached a new degree of success when other Jewish community mm-hmm. centers start opening up in Arlington Heights because you've gotten their attention. So thank you. Thank you to Rabbi Kalarski for your time. If anybody wants to unmute and ask a, a quick question, or if yes, anybody yeah. knows somebody yeah. who lives in Arlington Heights, lay it on us. Yeah. Right. So um, anytime I would look for adult care jobs, Arlington Heights was the main place where the seniors were living. Mm-hmm. So if you don't, have you realized that there's a lot of elderly in your town? Correct. There's a lot of elderly. There's a lot of medical. Um, and you know, I was once at a, at a town meeting and they were wondering why is there so much zoning for medical offices? And you know, somebody said, well, maybe it's because it's an aging community. So there is a lot of, there's an older population in Arlington Heights. Do you, uh, do you have a standalone shul or is it part of your home? What's the plan? A great, great question. Um, we, as of right now, we are in our home. We have our Hashem. We bought. We were. We looked uh, very long and hard to find a home which has a large living room, dining room. You know, most of the homes in this area, um, you know, the living room, dining room are kind of like a. Um, they're they're not one long open room. You know, they're they're separated from each other. And we waited. You know, as soon as we found a house which can has one long room can kind of serve as a shul. You know, we we jumped on it, um, but we are actively looking for another location. Um, location is a, it's a difficult because we're looking for something obviously in walking distance to where we are right now, and we are actively looking at this moment for God willing opportunity for growth. Hopefully, to move into an office, an office space or some sort of rented area. And obviously the long-term goal and the dream is to have a beautiful Jewish center um, and a permanent building. I mean, it will be. I'm sorry, one more thing. So understand people at the senior care, um, whether they have care or not, they're always open for like one day to like adult care. So maybe in the future you could have, I know you start out usually with little kids, mommy and me, but an adult care day would be fantastic, maybe for your future. Okay, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Thank you. Look at that. Um, Beautiful. Okay. Excellent idea, Bachi. Thank you. All right. So we want to thank Rabbi Kutlarski for joining us late at night. Sorry that I was a few minutes late. We, reminder, no 